Well, I have just come across this pile of wood and it looks like freshly cut wood. I mean, there's still wood shavings on the floor, on the ground, right below my feet here. And see how yellow? Hopefully my camera can capture how yellow these wood shavings are. And if you look at the wood itself, See how some of it is really yellow, almost like golden color or orange, I don't know what you want to call this. This one for example. See other woods are not so yellow. More yellow there. You can see the shade of my camera. Well generally I don't like when loggers do that because for one it kills the trees. Secondly, it fragments the habitat for the animals and thirdly, it hurts the mycelium from which the fruiting bodies known as mushrooms grow. So I'm never happy to see that. Plus I really don't like the sound of chainsaws because I want to escape the noise when I go to the forest. don't want to listen to the loud chainsaw noise. So I'm never happy about it, but since I'm here, I thought I'd use this opportunity and introduce this yellow wood. Obviously the flesh is yellow or golden or orange or whatever you want to call it. So if you saw that tree you wouldn't really recognize it by the flesh. But it's good to know anyway, this is alder. And what's notable about alder is that even though it's a deciduous tree, it grows cones that look like pine cones, just much smaller. That's a telltale sign that it's an alder, unless you can see it cut and then you see that it's golden yellow. As a matter of fact, let me take a look around. I mean, there's trees here, but I don't immediately see an alder. Let me take a look around to see if I can find a living alder tree and I'll show you more of what it looks like. Okay, see these little cones? They almost look like pine cones, but they're not. Tiny little ones, kind of fingernail size. These cones are from an alder tree. They look like pine cones, but they're not from a pine. They're not even from a coniferous tree. They grow on a deciduous tree, on an alder, the tree with yellow flesh. And these are actually female flowers of the alder tree. There are these small conifer-like cones that grow at the end of branches. They're actually called strobiles. They turn brown in fall, as you see here, and stay on the branches throughout the winter. We are now at the end of February, so still winter, even though it's winding down, but it's still winter. And these strobiles, they stay on the alder tree throughout the winter. They turn brown like that, when they mature, but when new ones grow, they're green. This is the most recognizable feature of an alder tree. Tiny little cone-like structures called strobiles. These are female flowers. Male flowers, on the other hand, are these. Again, I have to put my hand behind it, otherwise the camera won't focus. These elongated clusters, they're called catkins. And these are male flowers of the alder tree. They're kind of soft, they're reddish, reddish brown, maybe, I don't know, magenta, maybe dark magenta to brown. These are male flowers, and you see the female flowers right beside it. So both male flowers and female flowers grow on the same tree. Alders are among the first to bloom. They begin to bloom while it's still winter outside and while the branches are bare, as you can see. Yeah, I mean, it's a smaller alder tree, but nevertheless it's alder. There are no leaves. It's still winter, it's freezing cold, no leaves, but the flowers already grow. I mean, these male flowers, these catkins. When the leaves grow, I cannot show you now, but when they grow, they're kind of egg-shaped and they have serrated edges, similar to birch trees <laughs> and that's not surprising because alders are related to birch trees. The difference is that they have cones, unlike birch trees. 
their bark is grayish and underneath there's this golden flesh there's a broken branch but it's been broken for a while so it kind of darkened and turned brownish but if it wasn't so old I guess it would be possible to see how golden yellow orange that flesh is the bark is smooth yeah it has these little spots they're kind of orangey too you can also see white lichen growing on it but while I'm here I'll put focus back on these catkins so note how dark reddish brown these are they look very similar to I'll just take a short walk I passed by it here here's a birch kind of a young one too the tree of the same family as alder oh, here's a bigger alder tree now there's that lichen I was telling you about I may have to use the zoom feature but then the focus will go totally lost this type of lichen grows frequently on older trees unless they're very young like the other one so that's an older as well and this whitish grayish lichen is not a telltale sign that it's an older tree oh look at that my camera can focus and obviously you got these cones but I was going a little bit further down <laughs> look at that the winter is definitely coming to an end now look at these catkins for comparison they're much lighter they're not this magenta dark red brown color they're kind of an I don't know what is this kind of grayish these catkins look very similar to older but the color doesn't match and this tree doesn't have any strobiles any of these cones this is hazel while hazel is blooming you can tell it's hazel because it doesn't have the cones and because these catkins are lighter colored when it grows leaves the leaves look very similar to older but they have points they have a point on the side opposite to where they're attached to the tree whereas alder tends to be more round both hazel and alder have their leaves serrated along the edges but hazel is more pointy I cannot show you the leaves because it's still winter it's February and these trees don't grow any leaves yet but they do begin to bloom early they produce these flowers before there's any leaves while it's still winter whereas older had much lighter kind of ash colored grayish skin this one is more brownish darkish green the female flowers well I cannot see any they form these buds I guess it's too early for female flowers they form these buds they grow kind of upwards and have these reddish petals almost I don't know how to describe it I guess I'm gonna have to come back to add to this video and of course this is where hazelnuts come from See, and this is typical hazel the trunk actually consists of multiple stems and here the ridges are more pronounced and back to alder so this video can finish where it started here is a bit of a larger specimen you can see no leaves because it's still winter but the catkins are growing big time and last year's strobiles are still there they're the dry ones the brown ones the new ones haven't grown yet and you can see the foliage full of catkins and once again you can see the lichen growing on the trunk and the trunk is this ash silvery gray color as I said this specimen grew a little bit larger but in general 
Alder is not a very big tree. It only grows for some dozens of years. This type of alder, the common alder, can grow over a hundred, but if you compare it to the lurch, the European lurch, which I introduced to you last time, alder is a baby tree, really. The age of a lurch counts in hundreds of years. It can be thousands, two thousand years old. Whereas alders grow dozens of years, maybe hundreds at most. But to their benefit, they grow faster than other trees, so they can outcompete them while they're young. They're not a highly sought after tree, not generally thought to be very valuable, but they actually are. They can grow on disturbed land, on disturbed soil, they can grow on a very soggy soil, and they have some kind of ability to draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and put it back into the soil, making it more usable for other plants or other trees that come after. These catkins can be used as survival food, they're edible, and they're a source of protein. Even though they're quite astringent and not really the most delicious thing you've ever eaten. And the bark, if I recall correctly, has anti-cancer properties. So that's in brief it. That's the alder. A somewhat inconspicuous tree that probably grows around you. It may not seem like much, but it is actually quite useful for the environment and can be used as food or as medicine. And the soil is always grateful to have it around. Or maybe I should say other plants and other trees would be grateful if there was an alder before them. This looks like a female bud wanted to grow into a new, fresh, green strobile. All strobiles are here, last year's.